Okay, guys, we're going to get going here. So let's share the video. Okay, you should see me. I have my AirPods in because that was the best way for me to have this uh, this call with you uh, instead of holding a phone up to my head or putting you on speakerphone with an echo. So my name is Heidi and I'm with Opticom Tech. Uh, we're going to start and we're just going to kind of go through. This takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to try not to bore you so much because uh, I personally uh, get bored on webinars So <laughs> when I'm listening to them. So hopefully we can avoid that. Um, so I work for Opticom Tech and uh, what we do is we do industrial video. And that's kind of why Crescent was uh, interested in us and, and interested in our products is because they're really unique. Uh, they're really specialized to the very specific applications. Um, and not a lot of people market to these kinds of industries and have products that work long term in these kinds of industries. So that's uh, kind of where our niche is and, and why we do really well. So uh, we will kind of get rolling here. You should be able to see my slideshow uh, that I have here. It says uh, Opticom, and it says specializing in video solutions. Um, so to kind of get started here, um, so who we are. So experts uh, in industrial video applications. Uh, we've been doing this for a really long time, and we've got some people that have been around for a very long time uh, working with this company that have done a lot of different industries, a lot of different applications, and we just have a lot of knowledge in, that, uh, in those different fields and different areas. Uh, unique products with added features. Uh, we do unique products. We do vibration-proof products. We do um, you know, high-impact products, things like that, that do set us apart from your standard commercial line of cameras. Uh, we're known for our product reliability, reliability uh, excellent customer service and support. We really uh, work hard to serve you and to serve your customers so that um, no matter what happens, you always walk away and, and we know we've had a good experience with Opticom. Um, and then marketing. We advertise directly to end users. So you're not going to find our products in um, like security magazines or anything like that because, you know, what, we're not trying to, to sell to the security guy. We are marketing and advertising in um, the aggregate magazines and in uh, wood processing magazines, grain magazines, uh, things like that where we're really trying to let those guys know the product so we're creating a uh, market for you to go out and actually sell to. So hopefully you'll have through that some guys coming to you looking for stuff as well. Um, so our products. So here's kind of where we're at. So the CCO2 all-weather industrial camera. So I've got some products here so you can kind of see the size because everyone thinks this camera is a lot bigger than it actually is when they see the picture, but it's quite small. Um, so it's uniquely designed to meet the rugged environmental demands of heavy industry. The virtually indestructible titanium alloy housing ensures long camera life by shielding the imaging and components from dust, moisture, vibration, and extreme temperatures. Um, so this is it right here. Uh, it's quite small. It's got a three-part bracket to it, one, two, three, so it's triaxial, so we didn't tighten everything so we could actually show you right here how it kind of goes side to side. Um, you can configure these three brackets in all kinds of different positions to mount. Uh, this is a great one for uh, on top of and underneath machinery uh, and fa uh, factories and processing. Uh, so the vibration resistance of the CCO2 is unsurpassed. Independent vibration testing has proven the CCO2's ability to stand up to the stresses caused by industrial machinery. The specially sealed housing, which is IP68 rated, according to NEMA, prevents dust and water penetration. Um, here is the yellow one as well. So you can see um, the connection on this um, right here. Again, just to show you very briefly, and for those of you who are not logged into the video part, I apologize for the boring part of this right now for you. Um, but it's got a little four pin connector, uh, waterproof connection, right? So, which only a few factories require it, but some factories actually have this. And that's there, I don't know if you can see that in there. Um, but it connects right into the cables that they already have. Otherwise, it is a uh, BNC and a 2.1 millimeter plug for the power. Um, and that's for the analog version, which is the CCO2. Um, and then we've also got an IP version of this as well. But right now we're doing the analog and the HD TVI. So the gray one that I showed you is the analog. And then the yellow one is the HD TVI. Um, so that's a 1080p resolution or 700 TV, uh, TVL line resolution. Uh, multiple lens sizes. These are fixed lens sizes. These are high vibration cameras. And people come to us, well, we need a verifocal. If you are putting a camera into a high vibration area, you don't want a verifocal. You want a fixed lens. We keep it as a fixed lens for that reason. Uh, you can talk to any high vibration people that have, or high vibration you know, companies, factories, whatever it is, that have cameras installed that are verifocal. They constantly have to go in and readjust it to put them back in focus. So we do the fixed lens for a reason. Um, so that's why we have such a wide variety, 2.9 up to 16 millimeter. Um, the extreme vibration resistance, extreme uh, temperature rating, so uh, we've got these in the tundras in Canada, and we've got them in the Sahara Desert, right? So really, really hot and really, really cold. 
Uh, it does not have a, hilter, uh, a heater built in. The camera is just a really, really thick housing that uh, just keeps it snug in there. It's where it, it doesn't get hot, it doesn't get cold. It's a great camera. So refrigerators, a lot of people like even gas stations, you know, they're like, well, we just need something to put in the fridge. A lot of guys will just go with this for years. So uh, steel mills, things like that. We've got these in steel mills that are above the, uh, the melting metal up top. The highest rating that we've heard back is 210 degrees. Um, that somebody's got it in. Um, this is not going to replace a water cooling camera, but it is going to help your factories and facilities save money on areas that are hot, but not hot enough for a water cooling camera. So this isn't going to be a 400 degree temperature camera, but for that in between, this is a really great solution for them that's much, much cheaper than the water cooling cameras. Um, so it's IP68 waterproof, dustproof, uh, titanium alloy housing. Uh, the VM-1 here is that as well. It's quite small. You can see the vibration damping right here. Uh, this fits onto our CCO2 cameras only, uh, but it'll fit the yellow or the gray one. And this is when you've got um, a place that wants to mount it right on the machinery of a really, really heavy vibrating machine. So if you go into a sawmill, for instance, and they have a debarker, and if you don't know what a debarker is, it's this huge machine that they dump a giant log on, and it's got spikes all the way down it, and it vibrates and flips the log over and over and over until all the bark comes off. So you can imagine when you've got, you know, a log that's, you know, this big around, massive, on this giant machine, the amount of vibration they have. So if your guy's like, hey, I want to mount my camera to my debarker, we can absolutely accommodate that. You just definitely want to sell this with them. If you're putting on regular uh, machinery that's maybe not that high of vibration, the camera itself is vibration resistant and should last without any problems. Um, so that's just an extra option for you. Uh, okay, so we go into the CCO4, right? So this is the IP version of that camera, basically. It comes with the vibration mount already. It's on VIF compliant, two megapixels, IP67, I mean, uh, IR, infrared, uh, PoE, or 12-volt DC. Uh, it's really good. Comes in, it auto auto detects and auto configs on all of our uh, IP, uh, IP equipment. So it works really well with that. So here's kind of where you can go with these, the rugged industrial CCTV cameras. So we have the analog version, the HDTVI version, and the IP version. Um, so wood processing, biomass, aggregate plants, factories, uh, any factories, the auto industry is great for that CCO2 and the CCO4 as well. Uh, recycling plants, mining, waste and water plants, um, steel mills, uh, the list goes on, really any factory. This is kind of the camera that you would lead in with in any industrial location because it it really just fits a lot of applications because the vibration, the dust proof, the waterproof, the size of it. Uh, we've got guys that drop it down um, for mining. Um, just, I mean, all kinds of different things. So it's definitely the camera you would lead in with that would kind of open the door for you uh, to a customer that maybe doesn't want to talk to you about lighting or about uh, datacom connections or something like that. This would just be something unique you would lead in with. Um, so the stainless steel cameras, right? We've got those as well. I have one of them here. Here's the bullet, so this is the size for you. Again, so you can kind of get an idea on that. Um, and then the dome is actually a lot smaller than I ever thought until I finally saw it when we got them in stock. Um, they're quite tiny, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. So the CCO6 stainless steel cameras are built to meet and exceed the requirements of washdown environments and high corrosion environments. The cameras are available in analog, the HDTVI, or the IP networking. Uh, just like the rugged cameras, same thing. We've got it in all the formats for you. Um, they are on this compliant as well. Um, and we'll kind of run through them. Uh, the analog 700 lines, uh, 3.6, uh, IP68. So this, the HV36F is really unique. I want to show you. I pulled this one out for a reason. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see that in the video right there. Um, you see the LEDs aren't actual LEDs. They're little lights, right? So it's an array. So with this particular camera, it's not an infrared night vision camera. It actually lights up a white light in front of the camera. So for mining, right, we've got people in mining that love this camera for it. Um, it's got a white light, so it's adjustable in the sense that the light can adjust outward or inward, right? So just like a flashlight, right? If you put it out, obviously you don't have as much light as far away, but it's a wider, whereas you put it in, I mean, just like a lens too. You know, it's more narrow, but you get a little bit more distance. So it's a really, really cool um, adjustable LED. Um, so we also have this, uh, the HB23, which is a standard infrared one. Um, so that one doesn't have the array but that's an actual IR one. So you'll get the, you know, the red infrared on there. Um, and that one's got sense up uh, 700 lines. Again, that's the analog version. Um, and then the domes, here's the domes that I showed you. So analog TVI, we've got an IP as well, um, so which is 700 or the 1080p. Uh, this is a verifocal. These are not high vibration cameras. Uh, we've got some guys in mind that use the bullet cameras and we tell them all the time, they're not meant for that kind of vibration. 
uh, but they're like, they're not breaking. They're not, we're not having problems with them. So we're going to keep buying them. So, you know, we've got some guys, I think it's in Canada, these guys use these. Um, so, so just to give you an example there, um, they're all AISISS 316 stainless steel housings, which is really important. Um, IP68 waterproof, dustproof, and then this one's got the 24 LEDs. Uh, the IP version is going to read about the same. It's two megapixel. Um, same same thing. Uh, you may be thinking, why is the CCO4, why is this camera, and then even when we get into our explosion-proof stuff, two megapixels. When you get into industrial sites for these kinds of cameras, they are not looking for eight megapixels. Two megapixels is overkill for what they're trying to accomplish usually. Um, analog is uh, ideal, right, for their visual needs of what they actually need, uh, but but they're not looking for it. So we don't go any higher than that in the industrial line uh, just because it's kind of a waste of money. We're basically making them pay more money for a resolution that they don't need. So we really kind of try to steer clear of that uh, for that reason. Um, hang on, I'm trying to mute the background there. So uh, so that's why we do it in that, that way. So it's not any higher than the two megapixel. Um, they're all PoE. All of our IP industrial cameras are PoE or 12 volt DC. So what we can do with the stainless steel. So if you've got bacteria resistant, so like food processing, beverage processing, meat processing, uh, you know, a chicken broth plant, a anything like that, a pet food plant, any of that kind of stuff. Um, well, pet food plant actually needs explosion proof, but but anything like that for the bacteria resistant, again, that AI SISS 316 meets the requirements for the washdown for those kinds of applications. So it's really important. Um, corrosion resistant, same thing, chemical plants, pharmaceutical plants, uh, ferries, boats. Uh, right, because the, uh, the salt in the air will just tear apart cameras. Uh, port authority, anything like that on salt water, the chemical plants, anything like that, uh, these are the camera for the job. Um, they're corrosion resistant, high corrosion resistant. Um, and then again, because the bacteria resistant with the wash down stuff and, and certain things, uh, hospital rooms, surgery rooms, things like that. So these are things you want to just keep kind of in your arsenal um, and, and see what you can do. Uh, a lot of meat processing by these actually, uh, they're a good fit for that as well. And they meet, again, the requirements. So the explosion-proof cameras are certified to meet the requirements of an area that's classified as hazardous and potentially explosive. Opticom CCO3 cameras are enclosed in intrinsically safe housings that are built to contain any sparks that may be created by the voltage and current being used within the housing. So here's one of them, not the one in the picture there, but this is our biggest one um, right here. Uh, it's quite heavy. Um, comes in a pretty standard housing, right? So um, this is an IP explosion-proof camera. There's a lot of LEDs in there. Um, I think it's 39 of them. So if you don't know, explosion proof does not mean that this camera is going to withstand an explosion. So whenever you you know you have a customer that says, hey, we need an explosion proof, that's not what they're talking about. It is a rating just so you know, and you may already know this, don't get me wrong, um, that it's just so that it contains the spark inside so the camera can't cause an explosion. So there's quite a big difference right there. Um, okay, so we've got the CCO31F. This is our small little little tiger. I don't have one uh, here with my demo stuff. Uh, it's only about this big. It's quite small. Um, 700 lines. Uh, again, it's got the adjustable, uh, the fixed lenses on this one, but it has the CSA, FM, ATEX, and IEC approvals. Uh, it goes to negative 40 degrees Celsius, and it's IP66. It's still waterproof and the dustproof, and obviously it's an explosion-proof housing. Um, the mount that goes with that uh, is actually the same as our vibration monitor mount, and I can show you that right here. Um, it's got this one doesn't have it. This is the vibration monitor mount, but it's the same thing. The holes are just drilled in differently and it mounts to this. So it's vibration resistant and then it has a small pan and tilt to it. It's really simple to install. Um, so that is the analog. We've got analog and TVI. We're doing a switchable version right now, which isn't out, but it will be coming out soon, but it'll be switchable between analog and HD TVI. Um, and then here's our IP one, which I just showed you. Again, that 2.3 megapixel is the 3.5 to 16. Again, the CSA, the FM, ATEX, IEC. So all the ratings that you need. So this is is uh, ideal. Anything explosion proof, it meets all the ratings that are out there. 39 infrared uh, LEDs, so you're going to get some distance at night. Uh, and then again, it mounts to that mount as well, that vibration mount. Um, and then our new camera, which we are working on uh, doing the product uh, press release. And I think we're getting with Carl and marketing right now to try to get hits where it's out for, uh, I believe, next month for your February release of all the new products that y'all are offering. So it should be in there. Um, that's the CCO3 IP2M. Our part numbers are horrible. IP2MF36IR. Um, so it's about of a mouthful, but it's going to be the exact same as the other one, but it's a 3.6 millimeter lens. Um, so it's a fixed, whereas our other IP is a verifocal. And the reason that we did that is to cut down on cost. 
Um, so you need a bigger housing and there's a lot of different things that you need when you get into IP cameras and verifocal and things like that. So we cut down costs so we have a little bit more cost effective um, option out there for customers. As far as where we're priced at with our explosion proof and all of our industrial, we're priced very, very fair. Um, we work really hard to keep our prices underneath, but have the quality really high. Um, so, so if you get into the industrial world with Opticom's industrial product, uh, you don't typically run into a pricing issue. Um, usually we're, we're priced right where we need to be to get things accomplished. Um, so explosion proof cameras. So when would you use them, right? So offshore oil rigs, refineries, marine port authority, grain terminals, grain elevators, um, the pet pet processing, food processing, like I said before, um, wood processing, um, military. Um, so anything like that is where you're going to actually um, use it. So the QS4-8 quad splitter and then the SVD2404 quad splitter. I know that it sounds uh, quite quite old school um, for the quad splitters, but what we have with that is uh, a lot of processing areas do not want to pay for a DVR because they flat out don't want to record, they don't need to record, and quite honestly, they don't want it on the network because they don't want everybody to see it. So you would be absolutely amazed and shocked that in 2018 uh, to see how many quad splitters, which is a very old analog technology that we sell on a very regular basis, for this purpose, um, one of the cool things about it is that uh, we'll do a, a two-way two split, and um, we haven't been able to find any recorders or create any recorders that do that same dual split. Um, so it's really cool. So we can do uh, two cameras on there at a time. Um, they're usually used in the industrial applications, and a, a operator, a line operator, can watch the entire line uh, down the whole process. So basically, he'd have his uh, cameras down there, and then he'd have his splitter and his monitor, and one guy could watch the whole thing. Um, Let's see, so that is analog, and we've got it in the HDTVI for the quad splitter rate, uh, which is the two, four, and eight channel split screen, adjustable image quality by channel, um, image loss alarm, and then the IR remote control that is included with the quad. Um, the 2404, which is the HDTVI hybrid, right? It does TVI and it does analog. Um, so again, these are just things that are uh, basically accessories to the, to the main part of the product that they need, the meat and the potatoes, which is actually the industrial cameras. So um, there's a, on the, the DVRs that we have for these, the HDTVI and analog, the perks are the frame by frame and the slope playback and the freeze frame. So you can do it where you do uh, almost like a dial and you click between the old stuff uh, and it goes frame by frame by frame. So when you get into facilities that are looking to troubleshoot this, you can click one frame and then the next frame and then the next frame so they can see exactly what went wrong, exactly where that problem was on the machine and on the line. Uh, so it's really, really helpful for troubleshooting, maintenance and things like that. Um, HDMI and BNC outputs on them, obviously, and then optional recording. We can we can go with a hard drive and without a hard drive. Um, so let's see. And then, so then here we have the NVR, uh, which is H.265 compression, auto detects uh, Opticom's IP industrial products. Right, so any of our industrial or commercial for that matter, um, as soon as you plug it in, it's gonna auto config, which is kind of turning into a standard thing these days, but uh, but it is really nice when you put it in, it auto detects it, auto configs the whole camera and off you go. It's basically making it plug and play for your end user. Um, and then it's available for 816 uh, channels with PO and then 32 or 64 channels non-PO. And then of course they're stackable. Um, so you can have 564 channels all stacked up and good to go. Um, up to 48 terabytes of hard drive storage, and then from there you can go into an external storage. Um, and then we've got the monitors, Opticom's industrial CCTV monitors have been installed in you know tough locations, which is heavy vibration, heavy dust, uh, things like that for over 15 years. Uh, the monitors are proven to hold up longer than a standard monitor and dusty vibration, um, and dusty vibration saturated locations. And then we highly recommend our industrial CCTV monitors for any industrial installation. Um, industrial monitors, uh, so we've got analog TVI IP monitors, seven inches all the way up to 70 inches. Um, there's definitely a dis difference when you get into an industrial monitor versus just a standard monitor. Uh, you got a lot of guys now that are like, hey, we're just going to run to Walmart and pick up a monitor, which is great, which is fine. You know, if you're putting cameras in your house or, you know, your gas station or, you know, your uh, storage unit or whatever the case may be. That's fine, but when you're going into these industrial sites, you really want to make sure that you've got a monitor that's going to last for your customer. Um, VESA standard mounting, uh, they're all VESA standard, right, which uh, is pretty standard across the line anyway nowadays. And then popular sizes that go into the industrial world, uh, the most popular are the 15, 17, 19, 27, and 32. 
and actually the 21 and a half inch is not on there. But, uh, but yeah, those are the sizes that, you know, we move a lot of, which I'm sure even in the commercial world, you know, in our commercial line, we move a lot of those as well. So, uh, but in the industry, uh, especially uh, the 19 inch when they put the cameras on a line. Um, then we've got the 21 and a half inch TDI monitor. So that one's a 1080p HD display. Um, so that one means you can cl plug a HD TVI camera directly into the monitor. So for those of you who don't know about HD TVI, um, we'll do a really quick rundown. It uses a BNC connector, just like an analog connection, except it's a digital, um, a digital transmission. So that means that if you plug an HD TVI BNC into a monitor that is an analog monitor, you will not get a picture. Uh, if I remember correctly, it actually rolls uh, a screen. So you have to have a TVI monitor. Uh, when you're gonna actually run into this is when you're in um, any factory or any facility that's got a line or an area where they wanna put one camera and plug it straight into a monitor and they need a really good image, right? So that's when you're gonna do it. Um, and you know, when you get the IP in that, it just doesn't make sense. The cost-wise, you go with an HD TVI and you plug it straight into a monitor and it's gonna be a super simple solution for them. Um, so HDMI, VGA, DVI inputs, um, as well as that HD TVI, BNC in, and then there's also an out for that as well. Uh, and then it comes with a monitor stand on it as well. Uh, that's the vibration mount next is the one that we kind of talked about, right? So we can't say your monitor is going to last uh, five years longer if you use it, but uh, we can say it's definitely going to last longer if you use it. Uh, so it's vibration. You can see the vibration damping right in here. Uh, super simple. This piece right here actually slides out. So you mount this to the back of your monitor, mount this part to the wall, and then you just slide it in place. Uh, so it's a super simple uh, mounting process. Um, Heavy gauge aluminum, uh, it's got that tilt and that swivel that we talked about as well. Lock boxes for DVRs, NVRs, pretty standard. You throw it in there, it comes with two keys and it's got a built-in fan. We've got lots of different sizes so you can stack the NVRs in there if you need to. Uh, just kind of a place to lock it up so that uh, you, you know the employees, not necessarily that they think somebody's gonna steal it, but just so that nobody can go in there and mess with it. Um, okay, so wireless video. So this is always a hot topic in the industrial world, right? So we do have wireless video. Our wireless video is really, really good. Um, I can honestly say we've not gotten any back. Uh, we've never had somebody call and say, it's not working. Uh, we've had somebody call and say, hey, you need to help us get it to work. Uh, you know, like typical tech support on any kind of system, but our wireless is really, really good. Um, it is rugged, it's tough. They come in NEMA 4X enclosures. Um, we do a lot of wireless on uh, at ports for cranes, you know, the big cranes that are moving the containers around, things like that. Um, and then a lot with the aggregate plant stories and a little bit of mining with it. But those are our big ones. Um, we've put them into factories and facilities, but it does take a good bit of finesse uh, with all the steel and uh, metal machinery around to to actually set them up to where they're going to work. But we've done it numerous times. So, so if you've got guys that are saying, hey, I'm thinking wireless, we definitely have a solution for them. So, And that uh, is a solution in both an analog and an IP. So we have both of them. So whenever it comes to doing um, like cities and things like that, we definitely have uh, you know mesh networks and things like that. So we can set that up. Um, so that's the wireless. I'm not going to go too in depth on that. Application data sheets. So these are uh, just uh, little examples of some of the sheets that we have set up. So if you're like, hey, Heidi, you know what? Uh, we're going to really try to break into the food processing in our area because we've got four plants here and I just want to hit them up. Uh, call me up and we'll get some of these out to you. We can print, uh, print them off, you know, not print them off. We've got them printed. We don't do our own printing, but send you the actual nice ones, uh, not off my printer, and um, send them out to you, and you can use them to as leave behinds or to mail out to your customer, drop off your customer, whatever it is you want to do. Um, but they're really specific. Uh, the front just kind of says, hey, what you need it for type thing, and on the back, it's got all the products, uh, industrial products that are applicable to that specific industry. Uh, so they're really helpful for, for you, and then always just something else to put in your customer's hand to remind them that, hey, we've got video solutions, we've got industrial video solutions. Um, here's a few more of them as well. So the grain, the food processing, aggregate, um, sawmill industry, oil and gas industry, uh, steel mill, things like that. Um, and then lastly, uh, it's kind of we support you, right? So we support you with in-depth sales support. Call us up if you need help. Um, if you need to break down an application and you are just lost, you guys are all, I think, data comp specialists um, that I'm talking to. And then some of the industrial guys may need a little help with this if they're not familiar with it. But but use us, call us, tell us, hey, I don't know how to lay this out. Or, hey, the customer's looking for this. Is this something we can do? Um, you know, if you're in a position where you're just lost, call us up. Hey, can you just call my customer and help him figure out what it is he's trying to accomplish because he has no idea, right? We can do that for you. So it's not a problem. Um, 
you know, utilize us. We know our products. We know our part numbers. Use us. We don't need you sitting there for 45 minutes because you're digging through our price list to try to figure out what's the right part to go to this location. Call us up, you know. Um, and then we back everything we sell uh, with what we think is excellent support. Um, and if the end user is not satisfied, then we're not either. So we're not only trying to have, you know, whoever it is that we're, we're buddies with here at the, the distribution and say, hey, okay, everything's kosher. You know what I mean? We want to talk to your end user. We want to make sure that they're happy with the service they receive, with the product they receive, um, you know, with everything there. So we really, really want everybody to be happy, and we work really hard to make sure you're satisfied. Um, so that's kind of it. So it's kind of short. It was uh, probably uh, more boring than you uh, anticipated. I apologize. I get kind of monotoned on these things. Um, but that's it. I mean, here's our website, opticomtech.com, our phone number. Um, and then we have a short video, which I probably should have started with that, uh, on the CCO2 camera. It's back when the camera was white, but it still holds true. Uh, it's 49 seconds at toughestvideocamera.com. I do recommend that you hop on there and see what you can do. Um, you know, I mean, 49 seconds, and it just kind of shows you how tough the camera is. It's got a pressure washer on it, and you know what I mean? Uh, we have a truck rolling over it, just all kinds of cool things like that. So, I will unmute on my end, and if anybody has a question, you're welcome to say it, uh, or if you just want to hang up on me because you're tapped out, that's totally understandable as well, but I am going through un unmuting everyone. It's getting loud. Oh. Okay. So I do see a question that was asked by Nick. Sorry, I just saw this. Um, the majority of applications these are used in to be strictly observational, observational with little need. Okay, so that's a really good question, Nick. So they're not strictly observational. So here's what you go into is, is when you're going in with the industrial products into any of these applications, you don't want to go into the with a mindset of only security, right? Because I have a lot of guys that are like, oh, I walked in and I saw the security right there. So they've already got cameras, so we're good, right? So we can do the security and the benefit of doing the security with the industrial part is that they can integrate it all together. But a lot of these guys are looking to observe within the facility, not just cameras in the rafters so they can see, you know, if Joe slipped and fell really, or, you know, if Mark's out there, you know, taking a half hour smoke break, we're not talking about that, but these are people viewing observation on the line. Again, sometimes they want to record for troubleshooting and sometimes they don't want to record at all. Um, sometimes they want it on the network because their guy's super techie and he wants to be able to touch everything and see everything. And then you will have guys that I've literally sat down in offices and they're like, tell me what I have to do to not put this on the network and see everything I want to see, right? Because they are adamant. They do not want it on the network because they don't want everybody seeing what they're doing all day, right? It's it's quite interesting. Um, so it's not just observational um, in terms of, of that part of it. As far as getting specific into what they need, uh, we did uh, years ago a uh, Harley Davidson plant. And we went with uh, really high def cameras because they were putting stripes on uh, whatever component part it was that was actually going by on the line. So that one, they needed a very specialized uh, camera for that because it was a very detailed identification. But typically within these applications, it's, uh, it's, it's, they need an overview. Like if you've got an operator watching the line, he needs to make sure nothing's jammed up. He needs to make sure that uh, nothing's fallen off that uh, nobody's standing where they shouldn't be standing right there. So it's pretty observational, not detailed, detailed identification. When you get into that stuff, there are very specialized cameras that go into that that are, that are very onesie-twosie. Those are the ones that you walk into a facility and you might sell one or two of them. Um, our cameras are going to walk into a standard facility and you should be well selling anywhere from 40 to 70 of them um, as a, you know, on a new build. Otherwise, they usually buy uh, a couple each month, right? Which I'm always okay with a couple of cameras each month from the same customer. That's good business right there. So, um, so that hopefully answers your question as far as the, the detailed, with a lot more information than you asked for, sorry, um, the, the detailed identification. It is typically observational. Um, so when you walk into any facility or, or location, you want to make sure you've got your eyes open to everything. See if they have cameras. And if they do have cameras, don't think in your head, oh, they've already got cameras. Ask them, how are they working out? What do you wish you could do differently with them? Because they've either got cameras that are failing or they've got cameras that they've got mounted over yonder, right, that's watching everything. But again, the uniqueness of our products is that we can mount directly to the machinery and they're tiny, right? So you can get right underneath stuff to really see what they need to see that there's no way they could put someone underneath there to watch while it's running, things like that. Um, so that's what you want to kind of look at. Um, Laura Watson, you are unmuted. I saw your hand go up. Are you there? 
Hey, to what temperature do right. some of those cameras go to? Uh, for like, high heat? Uh, cold or hot? For the hot. For the hot. Okay. So when we did our temperature ratings, uh, like on the CCO2, <laughs> the guy in charge of that said, hey, it would be really cool to say it's 70 to 70. It was a Canadian Celsius, right? 70 to 70. Uh, so we told them to shut it all off at 70 degrees. So uh, so as far as uh, what the absolute highest is, the highest we've got it rated at that we've heard back from people is 210 degrees. Uh, the next time that we do an actual temperature test on these cameras, we're going to tell them to run the machine until it dies, right, until the camera dies. But we did not do that when we got the actual temperature test. We said turn it off at 70, let it run there for however long they have to do it to get the actual ratings and certifications. But we had them go no farther than 70, uh, which I think is like 100 and, I don't know, like, 70 degrees or something like that, maybe 160 uh, Fahrenheit. But the highest we've got it rated at is 210 degrees, and that's in a steel mill. And it, that rated that it was still working at that temperature. Cool. Does that kind of answer your question? Um, let's see. I think, does anybody have any more questions? If you look on here, you can like raise your hand or you can do, uh, it's got like a little question mark thing on my side that I see. Uh, so if you have any other questions like that, you can you can put them there, and I will find you, or try to find you. Nick, I can't unmute you because you have yourself muted. So you are welcome to speak. It's in, you have to enter your PIN on the audio call, and then it will unmute you. So if you could do that, Nick, then you can say everything you want to say if there's anything, but I do see your hand up. Does anybody have any other questions while we're sitting here? Okay, so I will wait just a moment to see if, oh. Hey, Nick, if you need the pen, it's 5-1. Yeah. He's, he's messaging me right now. So. <laughs> We do have method, uh, marketing material specific to the verticals we described. So some of the one, uh, the marketing material is what I showed you earlier. Uh, there's application data sheets is kind of what we call them. Um, so that's the one where it's got a brief paragraph on the front that says, hey, blah, 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 blah. This is what you use the camera for. And then on the back, it has all of the industrial products that are uh, related to that uh, specific vertical. So we do have that. And then we've also got, um, you know, postcards and like actual like marketing material, marketing material uh, that are geared for the different verticals and all too. We do a lot of direct mail marketing. Um, and we find that oddly enough to be very effective in uh, the industrial world. So, uh, so we have that that we can send out as well. So anything you say, hey, I need this, I want this, um, and we'll send you out. We're actually getting out. We're just working on it this week. Folders for everyone that'll kind of have a sampling of all of our marketing stuff for the different verticals. So when you get these folders, guys, uh, go through them. And if you're like, hey, I need this, shoot us an email, give us a call, and just let us know that, hey, you need um, this, that, and the other to come over immediately, and, and we'll drop it in the mail to you. That way you can use it for your own marketing. Hey, Heidi, I have one more question. Did you get my uh, spreadsheet finished for me? Ha! You're funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually pulled it up this morning. It is uh, just about done. Okay. <laughs> It's the pricing. It's the pricing that's not done yet. That's the only problem is they're, they're redoing the price list for 2018, and I've just not gotten the final on it. That's my holdup. Not okay. a problem. Oh, good. Nick, I see that, Nick. That is, uh, yeah, yeah, that's funny, Nick. Yeah, that's perfect. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'll send her the raw files, too. That way she can just do what she wants. <laughs> um, that's perfect. So good. Yeah, so I think we're good. Then um, if nobody has anything else, then I'm going to uh, tell you all you can hang up and, and have the rest of your Friday back. And I hope everybody enjoys this uh, wonderful weather. We're going to be in the 50s here in Michigan, so we're all fired up. And um, so I hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, I will send out, well, if I have everybody's email addresses, I'll send out an email to kind of follow up. But if anybody needs anything, you are welcome to give us a call at the office and chat with us or shoot us an email. Uh, thank you and have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much. Thanks, Heidi. Yep. Bye-bye.